Accounting Lesson 26 Topic Cash Budgets Turn to Lesson 26 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity and collection of evidence with formative baseline and summative assessment. Integration This lesson integrates with other previous lessons on budgets, prior knowledge. This lesson builds on what you learned about budgets in Grade 10 and Grade 11. Lesson Overview In this lesson you will cover the projected income statement, learn about the analysis and interpretation of the projected income statement, cover the analysis and interpretation of the cash budget. <laughs> Welcome to our grade 12 lesson on cash budgets. Now you've heard this before, you've seen it before, so some, some of it will be new, but the rest will be old hat. Let's see what goes on here. Now you must remember, although there's different kinds of budgets, you think of the household that you're in, there's a, there's a budget for the household, your parents need to budget. Now s s the same with businesses, there's different kinds of budgets, but what we're going to concentrate on is the cash budget. So there's a zero based budget, there's a capital budget, there's a long-term budget and there's a medium-term budget. But for the purposes of what we're doing is we're looking at the cash budget. Now, some of these things we've already dealt with in grade 11. What did you do in grade 11? Can you recall? Yes, I'm sure you can. We dealt with the debtors collection schedule. We dealt with the projected creditors payments. We also dealt with the cash forecast and we dealt with the cash budget. So all of this you've seen before, you've dealt with it, nothing is new to you, you know exactly how to go about answering any of these questions. Now if we talk about cash budget, just very important before we go into go further, remember already the word cash, it must ring a bell. In the budget we only work with cash items, but at a, on a later stage a little bit more about that. Now what are we going to concentrate in grade, in grade 12? The following aspects of the budget for a sole trader will be completed. The projected income statement where we determine the business's net profit. We're going to analyze and interpret this projected income statement and we're going to analyze and interpret the cash budget. Okay, so now what will these projections, what will they focus on? What will be they looking at? What, what aspects would be discussed? We'd be looking at the sales, the cost of sales, the expenses, the profit, the debtors collection schedule and the creditors payment schedule. So can you see, we're directing you, we're telling you exactly that this is where the emphasis will be placed. So you, you are focused and you know exactly where we are heading. Okay, now we're going to look at an instruction of how to complete, just to refresh your minds on how to complete that debtors collection schedule. So what is it all about? What are sold to the debtors on credit? How will I receive that money from them? You're not going to sell to them this month and, and, and expect to get the whole amount next month. If you're lucky, it might happen, but it doesn't always happen like that. So use the following information to draw up a debtors collection schedule for a three month period from the 1st of October up to the 31st of December. So now you ask yourself, what must I go and look for to complete a question like this? I need to go and find my credit sales. So let's see what's been given to us. If you're looking at your actual total sales, it's made up of, for July, August and September, an amount of 12,000, 16,000 and 12,000. Now remember, that's your actual total sales. The emphasis on the word total. But that's not what we're looking for. What are we looking for? Okay, then they also give us our projected total sales. So every time you will see that you have been given your total sales. Remember what I said previously. Total sales has been given, but when I do a debtors collection schedule, I need to go and look and see what percentage of that total sales was my credit sales. And remember for what period you have to go and do this debtors collection schedule. As you see there on your slide, we have to do for the period October, November and December. So we're going to use the total sales of those three months. Go and look at the additional info and find out what percentage of that is going to be on credit. Yes, and that's what we're looking for. Right, now here you see it. Under the additional information, I'm told that cash sales is 25% of total sales. Now, immediately you do a calculation. What's the calculation that you do? Right, 100% was total sales. 
if 25% of my total sales is cash, then obviously you don't have to be an Einstein to determine that 75% of total sales would constitute my credit sales. Okay, now let's see. Let's go and draw up. We will show you the solution, but you always ask yourself, for what period do I need to go and complete this status collection schedule? Ashraf, let's just refresh the months. It was for October, November, and December. But why have they given us the total sales of the previous months as well? Because what I sold previously, a portion of that could have been collected over the period for October, November, and December. So let's just go back and look at that total sales of the previous months. All right, and we'll go there in just one minute. Before we get there, let's look at the proviso. In other words, what's the pattern of payment from my debtors? Very important, each business has its own pattern. In this one year, the business we are dealing with, we are told that 50% of the debtors pay you one month after, pay a month after, right? Note, these debtors also receive a 5% discount for paying one month after the date of sale. So very important, 50% are paying you one month after sale and they receive a discount of 5%. That's right. 30% of the debtors pay you two months after the date of sale. 15% of the debtors pay you three months after the date of sale and 5% of debtors never ever pay and are written off. So take this proviso into consideration when you actually do your calculations. <laughs>